Today we're making wool insulation from scratch for a yurt. Um, so I purchased, we purchased 45 fleeces and it has been washed already um, using dish soap and then afterwards I treated it with a bunch of borax to help reduce its flammability and to protect from bugs. As you can see, this isn't the cleanest wool, it's still got some poop and some grass in it, and it's wool, so bugs might want to eat it, and so a little bit of borax hopefully will help alleviate that problem. So we got all this wool, and it wasn't that great. It's kind of lumpy and maybe not the best insulation, so we decided that the best thing to do was to build a wool picker to rip it up, and it increases the volume of the wool tremendously. So this machine, which is a hybrid between a medieval torture device and a catapult, as you can see, has many sharp nails and is quite dangerous, especially to clothing. But um, you can take this crappy wool, even if you've accidentally felted it in your machine, and rip it apart, provided, of course, you've built yourself a very tough wool picker. This is a Patrick Green style wool picker, and um, I got the plans off of a lovely local lady who does wool products for her living. She has a book on it. I believe the book is available on the internet. Patrick Green something had some kind of book on um, processing wool and there's plans for a wool picker in there. That's where these plans came from. Anyway, so it's rather remarkable. It, there's about 200 nails in there. It rips the wool apart and this is how I use my wool picker. The technique is pretty basic, the margin for user error is uh, quite small. It only has forward and backward. However, be careful you don't rip yourself. And like anything, there's a learning curve and you kind of get a technique, you develop your own technique, figuring whether sometimes you need longer strokes or bigger strokes and how much you can put in at once. And the point is, for our purposes, since we're not spinning with this wool, like most of the other videos on the internet of wool pickers, we kind of have this crappy wool and we're just firing it through with the purpose that it's creating it, making it just way fluffier and hopefully better insulating value. So as you can see, we now have this tremendous pile on this side of immensely fluffy wool. And what to do with that wool in order to make it manageable, we came up with the idea of stuffing it into pillowcases. So at this point, we're just shy of 200 pillowcases. We're expecting to need about 300 for the full yurt. And we stuffed it full of wool. We got the little sewing machine up here. And we sew them shut. And then after they're sewn shut, we're going to stuff them in duvet covers and quilt them. And then the duvet covers are giant panels of insulation which we're hanging on the outside of the yurt. So as you can see, there's almost 200, this would be maybe the 189th pillowcase that we've done this month, has been a lot slower than purchasing insulation, but a lot cheaper, a lot cheaper, $200 versus, I don't know, maybe $1,200, but it has taken quite a bit of time, and it will smell nicer, a little bit more of an earthy smell than fiberglass, and have a lot less dust. This is what one of our insulated wall panels looks like. It's not quite six inches deep, but hopefully close, and um, this is insulation that's homemade, and it's in a nice, big, manageable blanket form. We've got stitches, two stitches per pillow to hold it in place so that when we hang it up, all the wool stays perfectly in place. And, um, is that everything I was going to say? Yeah, that's all. <laughs>